Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use surface anatomy to divide the body up into various segments so we can identify intra-abdominal and intra-pelvic viscera or organs. So what I'm gonna show you today is, as you can see, I've drawn up my image here, like this, and I'm gonna divide the abdomen and pelvis up into various segments so we can identify what organs or structures sit within each. Now, there's two major ways we can do this. We can divide it up into nine segments, known as the nine abdominal pelvic regions, or we can divide it up more commonly into the four quadrants. First thing we're gonna do is divide it up into the nine segments, but I want you to remember this. These lines that we're about to draw up, even though they sound very specific and exact, they are arbitrary lines, and the intra-abdominal and pelvic organs a variable and what can result or what can be the cause of the variability are the following variation on the position of these organs can depend on the individual that you're assessing it could be their age could depend on their sex it can depend on their nutritional status it can depend on their position it can also depend on whether they've taken a big breath in or taken a big breath out. And this is because of the diaphragm being the anatomical barrier between the thoracic and abdominal region can actually move some of the viscera inside of the abdomen. So just keep that in mind, all right? Now, when we draw, let's do the nine abdominal pelvic regions. So we're gonna break it up into one, two, three, four lines that give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine regions. Now these regions, I'm gonna give you their names now and then I'm gonna show you on this individual. The top middle region is called the epigastric. Epi means on, gastric is referring to stomach. That may give you a bit of a hint as to what organ may be behind here. Then flanking either side are the hypochondriac. We've got the left hypochondriac and the right hypochondriac. Remember, it's always patient left and patient right. Now, you've probably heard the term hypochondriac before. Maybe you've been called a hypochondriac because you think you're sick all the time. Why would these regions be called the hypochondriac? Because you're soon going to find that they sit underneath the ribs. Hypochondriac, below the ribs. And back in ancient Greek times, they always used to think that illness, sickness, melancholy, sadness is associated with sitting or originating from underneath the ribs, hence the name hypochondriac. Then in the middle, we've got the umbilical or umbilicus. Flanked either side is the left and right lumbar because of where it's located in regards to the spine. Down here, we've got hypogastric, so below stomach. And that's flanked either side by the left and right iliac. which may be giving you an indication as to the iliac crest potentially of the hip. All right, so they're the nine regions. Let's now break it up on this individual. So in order to get the two vertical lines, you need to go from mid-clavicular to mid-inguinal. So mid-clavicular to mid-inguinal. Mid-clavicular to mid-inguinal. There's our vertical lines. mid clavicular to mid inguinal. All right, that's on both sides. We've got our vertical lines. Now, our horizontal lines, the top or most superior horizontal line, this is gonna be what we call the subcostal or transpyloric line. And this is gonna be at around about the ninth rib. And the ninth rib, if you count them, remember nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 is the bottom rib. So ninth rib is quite low. So we're gonna go through the ninth rib so let's write this up. This is at the level of the ninth rib. And if you were to correlate this to what's happening at the back, it's around about lumbar one or lumbar two, all right? Now the next line we're gonna draw is going to be what we call transtubercular. Transtubercular, this is going to the iliac tubercle from one side to the other, the iliac tubercle. So you take the iliac, right? Take the superior anterior iliac 
right at the top, the top of your hip bone basically, and then you go down until you can feel a lump, that's the tubercle, we're going from one to the other, it's a little bit below the belly button, here. So like I said, this is trans tubercular. And this is around about L5. So now we've drawn our imaginary lines, let's place the viscera inside. First thing we should probably draw up is the diaphragm because as we know the diaphragm is the anatomical barrier between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. So the diaphragm is going to be, I will draw it as a dotted line. That's going to be the diaphragm separating out our thoracic area from our abdominal area. And the next or first organ we should probably draw is going to be the most superior, largest organ inside. It's going to be the liver. Now you're going to find that the liver sits within a good number of these particular areas. And there's the liver there. So you can see that the liver goes from the right hypochondriac to the epigastric and a tip of it in the left hypochondria and also the bottom margin of it in the right lumbar. So you could say that most of the liver would sit in the right hypochondria but also epigastric. Now let's look at the stomach. If we were to do the, draw the stomach up, we're going to have the esophagus coming in a little bit to the left of the midline and then the stomach, and remember the stomach has this curvature to it, is going to go from the epigastric to the left hypochondria and then we're going to have the duodenum like that. All right. So we've got the stomach sitting in the epigastric region predominantly, but a bit of the curve sitting in the left epi, uh, hypochondriac. And what we're also going to draw up is the duodenum there. And that shows you that the duodenum starts in the epigastric and then moves through into the umbilicus area. All right. If we were to draw some other organs in the upper three areas, let's draw up the spleen. The spleen sits to the left of the stomach. So we're going to have the spleen around. Let's draw the spleen around here. All right. We're going to draw up the pancreas and the pancreas sits within this C flexure of the duodenum. And even though the tail of the pancreas articulates in with the spleen, it's hard to draw that three dimensionally because some aspects of the pancreas are intraperitoneal and some are retroperitoneal, so behind the peritoneal cavity. All right, now the rest of this small intestines is basically going to be housed within this umbilical, umbilicus area. All right, that's going to be where the small intestines sit. And after the small intestine snakes its way through, it will move its way down in the lower three regions. And then this is the terminal portion of the small intestines, the ileum, and it then turns into the first part of the large intestines, which is going to be called the cecum, and attached to the cecum is the appendix. So what you can see I've drawn up here is the cecum and the appendix in the right, what's this area called again? Iliac. Now, there's variation. Sometimes the appendix sits in the right iliac, sometimes it sits down here in the hypogastric. So not a big deal, depending on the two sides. You can do McBurney's point, but there's even variations there. Take the superior anterior iliac crest and go two thirds up towards your belly button, and that's predominantly on the right hand side where your appendix is. Now we've got the large intestines coming up, and then it goes across. So you can see that the trans, the ascending colon, is in the right lumbar. You've got the transverse colon sitting at the top of the umbilicus and then you've got the descending colon sitting there at the left lumbar and then it turns into the rectum and then the anus. If we were to also add the bladder, the bladder is going to sit in this hypochondriac region as well. So what we've drawn up is a couple of things. We've drawn up the liver, we haven't drawn up the gallbladder. If we were to identify the gallbladder, you'd find that the gallbladder sits at around about that superior transverse line that we drew up at around about the ninth rib. So sometimes it can be palpated around about the ninth rib, especially if it's inflamed. So there's the gallbladder there. So we've got the liver, stomach, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, small intestines, large intestines, including the appendix and um, bladder there. And if we were to look at the kidneys, they're sitting way behind all of this, 
sitting between both these lumbar regions and up towards little portions of it going up in towards the top left and right hypochondriac area. So this is a run through of the nine abdominal pelvic regions. Let's have a look at the four quadrants. This is easier, right? The four quadr quadrants simply break it up into four areas. Now it's gonna make this look a little bit messy, but let's draw over the top. You simply go down the midline through the belly button. And then in order for the horizontal line, you go along the iliac crest. So this is a little bit higher than what we drew here for trans uh, tubercular. And now what you can see is we've separated out into four quadrants. That quadrant, that quadrant, that quadrant, and that quadrant. Now, these four quadrants, you can name the left upper quadrant, right upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, and right lower quadrant quadrant. And again, because of what we've drawn up, you can see what organs sit within each. So this is a quick run through of how we can divide the surface anatomy of the abdominal pelvic area so we can identify the internal intra-abdominal visceral organs.